I consider myself to be a pretty tough chick. I have a pretty high pain tolerance physically. I don't get woozy that much when it comes to things like bodily fluids. I'm pretty good. But I learned about something last night that has literally, for some reason, just totally unglued me. It's made my stomach oozy and woozy and I, I, I just, but I'm so fascinated by it. And I have been spending all day today just looking stuff up on it. I don't know whether I'm a glutton for punishment or what, but of course, you guys, you know, I had to bring it to you guys because I absolutely want to see what you guys have to say on this matter. At this point, I really don't have an actual opinion because I'm still learning about it but all i know is i definitely had a visceral reaction and honestly i needed to know this like i needed a hole in the head pun intended but before we get into the topic at hand today for this quick video i did want to go ahead and put this out because today is the last day of spooky two's 11 year anniversary sell so today a what are we, April, I was about to say August, April, April 30th of 2024. This is the last day that you can get 9% off for Spooky 2's anniversary sale, along with some special gifts. You just write in Happy Bryce at checkout. And if you're not familiar with Spooky 2 Rife Machines, they are sponsors of this channel. I will go ahead and play a quick testimonial for you guys. And of course, all the information will be down in the description box below. So you can make sure to get your 9% discount before the anniversary sale ends. And if you're also completely new to Spooky 2, I will include include a video that I did a few weeks ago with Brad from Spooky 2. So hopefully that will give you a little bit more information on the Rife machine. After the anniversary sell ends, you will continue to get 5% off using my name, Bryce Watson. But right now for this day, this last day of the 11 year, year anniversary sale, it is at 9%. So watch this quick advertisement and then we'll get into the story for today. I am so fortunate to have such great sponsors on this channel. Our sponsors, as well as our patrons, are the people who keep the lights on here at Esoteric Atlanta so I can continue delivering videos to you multiple times a week. I am so lucky to be a part of Gnostic TV, to have ASEA as a sponsorship, and to now be sponsored by the incredible Spooky 2 company. Spooky 2 is like a rife machine generator to help you in your journey through this human experience. If you want more information on Spooky 2 and what it can do for you, there will be a video down in the description box. If you would like to purchase Spooky 2, there are a few different discount codes that you can do, all of which you can, again, find down in the description box below. For the 11 year anniversary of Spooky 2, for particular products that are listed for the anniversary sale, you can get 9% off of these said products by entering Happy Bryce in checkout. For all additional products, the regular products, you can get 5% off by entering Bryce Watson when you check out. Here is a little clip of what Spooky 2 can do for you. Hi, Joan, Echo, and the Spooky 2 team. This is Kanika here, and I'm here to share not just my and my partner's Spooky 2 journey. Spooky 2 has been superbly special for my partner and I am actually sitting in the scalar field. In our personal experiences, my partner and I have uh, literally gone off all our, our vitamin and multivitamin multivitamin and mineral supplements. We hardly take them. We used to take them to support and supplement our well-being. But I've been using the daily wellness protocol and my hair has just exploded in its growth. The skin's gotten uh, beautiful. The DH experimental frequencies, I've been experimenting with a lot of them. We have such good strength in our body. We don't fall ill to an extent that my partner has hay fever. Peter, he has hay fever, but this time, I've started using the immune super booster and 
Oh my God, it is magic. Uh, we recently this year purchased the remotes as well. So we use our DNA clipping and we put our clippings in it. And uh, it's just been so beautiful and profound. And I have always been, so I pray daily, I meditate daily. And I've been sitting in the scalar field and meditating and praying. And my psychic abilities, my connection to the divine, if I just want to put it in a nutshell, is just increasingly becoming so potent. I've been using the 12 strand DNA activation as well in the DH experimental frequencies just to see how it goes. And the, the effects are so magnificent in our, on our physical bodies and our like um, energetic field. I'm an energy healer. I take clients through um, quantum healing sessions while sitting in the field so that they can also, I can be a clearer conduit and send these energies as well by pure quantum entanglement, right? And if people were to not believe this, all this physical proof shows what a gem of a product this is. I can't like recommend this more to anybody like so yes much love and gratitude thank you for listening and uh, i could share so much more but i'd like to wrap this up now thank you All right, you guys. So, of course, I love looking into the world of the weird and the wacky. That's kind of what this channel is was founded on. And obviously, my boyfriend's a little bit the same way. I mean, that's we kind of have that in common. And and not only do we have that in common, but we're also um, the students uh, of of spirituality and traditional spirituality and in learning about different practices different kriyas, different things that people before us have done in the pursuit of knowledge, of enlightenment. And I don't know why I've never heard of this practice before. I've, I mean, I've been on this path for 18 years of studying spirituality, traveled all four corners, corners of the world in pursuit of, of spirituality, but I never heard of trepanation, y'all. what is trepanation trepanation is basically a hole in the head like that's where that slogan comes from i need this like i need a hole in the head it's a hole in your head and it's being done primarily now for spiritual reasons which again i don't really have an opinion on this practice um i understand their reasonings behind Believing that this brings a higher level of consciousness to the individual, it makes sense to me. However, I have a very physical, visceral reaction to this practice. Again, I'm a tough chick. I mean, I practiced with a broken sacrum for a week before I even realized my sacrum was broken. So, like, I, I, I can take pain. I've had numerous surgeries in my life. I, I can absolutely take pain. But this... This practice of trepanation made me effing queasy last night when we were watching the documentary on it. So I've got some notes here. Again, this is the idea of drilling a freaking hole in your skull. And it is one, they, they believe this is one of the oldest, oldest, oldest surgeries that have been done all across the globe. In fact, you guys, this practice of trepanation isn't found just in one ancient culture. Like, it's not like they just found a bunch of skulls with holes in their heads in like Egypt or Africa or South America. No, y'all, they're finding these skulls literally everywhere. And when they first started finding these skulls, like most of them were men because, you know, patriarchal society, but they started to realize when they were looking at these skulls, like sometimes you'll see a hole in a skull and you'll realize that that might've been the cause of the person's passing. However, with a lot of these 
at holes in these skulls. After looking at the skulls, they realized that the hole itself had healed, meaning that the person who received the hole lived past the creation of the hole, which of course opens up a whole world of questions as to why this was a common practice throughout the whole globe. Again, it wasn't specific to a particular group of people or a particular tribe, but like everywhere. We do know, and, and again, I say we do know, but we, we're not, you know, I'm a little bit skeptical on the historical timeline of things nowadays, as most of you guys know, but for what we know, what they've given us, we can date some of these skulls back to like 8,000 to 10,000 years ago. So this would be around the time where man, man was coming out of like into the stone age. So what that means for the traditional, the, the, the official narrative of, of our history as a human, human race is that this would have been the time when human beings, uh, we were still hunters and gatherers, but we were starting to become more um, centralized. Like we weren't more as nomadic as we had once been. Again, according to the official narrative, we were starting to create like villages, like little tribal communities. This is around the time where humans started to also domesticate animals. Animals. So this is a huge shift. If we're believing the official narrative of human of, of, our, of our timeline as humans, this was a time of great shift in humanity because we were becoming more centralized with each other. Again, the domestication of animals was huge because this is when we're starting to really farm. We're not just going out. We were still hunting and gathering, but we were we were kind of transitioning more to learning how to to do this where we were versus going out finding and bringing back. If that makes sense. So along with this this idea of, of becoming civilized into a village. Archaeologists also started to notice that when people started to become more civilized within villages, that we started to come more upon like an ancient age of reason. Even though this wasn't considered an age, age of reason, it was like an ancient age, age of reason, where we started to realize in order to survive within these villages, in order for human life, for the quality and quantity of human life to expand, then we needed to start to start to take care of medical issues. We start to see um, throughout history, like in this time period, the setting of bones. We have a lot of archaeological evidence to show that when when someone would break their leg, we we now see at this time people started to figure out that you could reset the bone for it to heal instead of just leaving the person to die. Right. So so when we see these trepanation scars on these skulls where these people actually lived past the procedure we have to wonder if this was not like some form of neurosurgery now this is to this day the oldest logged like surgery in the world is this trepanation but why people did this why there were an abundance of skulls with holes in their head for a while remained a mystery to modern archaeologists and modern man. Again, was this a form of neurosurgery or was this something else entirely? And the answer from what I understand is it was kind of both. It was kind of both neurosurgery and for something else entirely. And the reasoning behind putting a hole in your head, especially if we are to believe that this was figured out by an ancient people that were not as advanced as we are is baffling to me. And it made, I even called my friend Hillis and was like, dude, is this something they learned from the lost motherland of Mew? I don't know. And if you hear something in the background, that is definitely my dog. But speaking of my dog, that's another thing they found too. They have found trepanation on animals as well from this time and we don't know we have no way of knowing if they were doing trepanation on animals as like experimentation before doing it on humans i guess animal testing has been around for a long time or if they were doing this to animals for the same reasons that they were doing it to humans i want to believe that they were doing it to animals for the same reasons they were doing it to humans but who knows right so, so why? What is the point of trepanation? Now, trepanation to trep trepano is a Greek word that means bore. So it's a removal of a piece of bone in the skull. It's removed by scraping, sawing, drilling, or chiseling. And this is what I'm talking about, guys. Like, like 
in this documentary, which I will link it down below for you guys, they literally show people doing this because people are still doing this today. There are witch doctors in Africa who still do this. And there are also people here like in America who do this. And so there's this huge controversy between like medical doctors and people who are for trepanation. Now, William Osler, who was a Canadian physician, and he was one of the four professors who started uh, John Hopkins Hospital, do with that as you will. He said in 1913, that trepidation had been used for epilepsy, convulsions, headaches, and various cerebral diseases believed to be caused by confined demons. So let's talk about this. So what is the logic behind removing a piece of the skull? Now, if you look back at ancient pictures of skulls that have been found all over the world, like North America, South America, Africa, Europe, China, like everywhere, they've got these skulls of people with holes in their heads. Well, back then, there were like four different me methods of it, and the holes were quite big, right? But nowadays, the holes are like dime size. They're tiny. And the point is, and this is what makes sense to me, I talk a lot about like exercise being a form of spirituality for many, many, many reasons. But one of the reasons is it helps the blood, your blood, move through your body. So we know that when there is stiffness, when there is something wrong with the body, a lot of times blood will like congeal and will like stop. Like when you get cupped, like cupping is that they suck the old blood out. You get like a hickey and a new, the new blood will come in to help you heal because why your blood is your sacred DNA. And Every part of the body besides the brain, ha every organ has the ability to receive fresh blood. As the, as the valves of the lungs pump the heart, the valve of the heart, so the lungs pump the heart and get the blood to move throughout the body and then come back in and cleanse itself, we know that that is what keeps the body alive. That, 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 you know, that's why cardiovascular work is important, right? Cardiovascular, cardi heart, heart, vascular blood the vein system getting the blood to move through the body so when we're looking at the brain though when we're born when we're born for the first couple of years of our life we have what's called a soft spot most people know this right like when you hold a baby you have to be careful about their soft spot and you can actually see in most babies where the plates of the brain have not come together yet it's they're still growing together well, basically what we're doing with trepanation is we're creating another soft spot because when the skull plates come together and seal together, what happens according to the people who are in favor of trepidation, again, do your own research, guys. I still don't have an opinion on this yet. I just find this really fascinating, is that the brain and the membrane cannot get a good uh, uh, flush of blood because the brain and the membrane can't really move with the blood that's pumping in and out of the brain. And so when you drill a little hole in the head and the skull, it allows the membrane to then move with the blood flow. Now, what's freaking crazy and like makes me like, like watching this is that when they do this procedure, even to this day, most of the time, People are not put to sleep. They might be given a numbing cream, but from what I understand is that you're like where your skull is, like that's, I don't know if you can hear that, but that's my skull, right? Like there's no, there's not a lot of body fat. There's not a lot of nerve endings. And so to pierce through the skull here, even though yes, it would be slightly painful, it's probably not going to be as painful as other parts of the body. Now, what gets me, is in this documentary they showed it you bleed a lot like they had this picture of this one woman with her bandage around her head and she was like wiping the blood off of her face and then all over her outfit was just covered in blood <laughs> like i just like i it's god bless surgeons who can actually do this stuff because i think i'd rather watch somebody do surgery on the body I don't know why the trepanation, maybe, maybe I had it done in a past life. I don't know. Maybe, but it's like, it's very bloody. And there was a guy that they interviewed because some people are actually doing this to themselves. Like they're taking it upon themselves to, to, to trepanate their own skull. And this guy they interviewed was saying like he did it. And all of a sudden, like blood was just like, 
squirting out of his head. And he kind of freaked out for a little bit because he didn't realize how messy of a procedure this was going to be. Um, and then he said to you, like, here's some gurgling of the, the mint, like everything's starting to like equalize itself, all that kind of stuff. Now, most people nowadays, especially when they have have had trepanation you can't even tell like unless they were to like show you where it is you would never even tell because the hole is so small you you, you would have to really it, they would have to really point it out for you to see it and um oh like it and it's just wild you guys but that makes sense to me that you would have a higher level of consciousness simply because more blood is able to get to the brain. Now, according to a lot of people, now there's some people who ended up having trepanation done. Now, again, you'll have to watch this documentary, but like not on purpose. Like they had a car accident where their skull cracked or they had to have neurosurgery or something happened where there was a fracture or a break in the skull. And when the soul, uh, skull healed back, there might have been a little space where there was a bit of a hole. And so technically, they have trepanation, even though that wasn't the point of the procedure that they had. And what was interesting, my friends, is that all these people who had wound up having this experience unintentionally as adults, so therefore, they have memory of their life before the accident or whatever, or their surgery, and then like after it, they all said the same thing about things they experienced. They said that they had way more energy with the hole in their skull. Um, they talked about how even though they had more energy, they were more at ease within their life. Um, they talked about they they felt like they got smarter, like their IQ raised, which makes, again, makes sense. They're getting more blood to the brain, right? Um, that they were sleeping better. They talked about there being a mystical element to it, that they felt more spiritual. Wild, wild, wild stuff. And so um, I wanted to show, I went on DuckDuckGo because I know that's, that's the big problem, right? We Medical science is not um, going to probably ever support this. So the, its practice, they say, can be attributed to many reasons. For example, magic religious reasons such as to free people from demons that could be torturing them. Initiation as a way of giving rite of passage to adulthood or to turn someone into a warrior. Therapeutic reasons to treat tumors, convulsions, epilepsy, migraines, loss of consciousness and behavioral trains, and treatments of, of, of traumatization, traumatiza traumatisms like skull fractures. So, so okay, so that makes sense too. Like, as Dr. Um, Osler said, hold on one second, I am pulling up another article for you guys, but as Dr. Osler said, this probably was something and and that way it could have been like a neurosurgery even though they're not touching the brain at all it's just removing a piece of bone from the skull it could very well have relieved things like epilepsy or my constant migraines i mean i know when i get bad migraines sometimes it, you can like hear the blood <laughs> like that pounding right that pounding headache and so um absolutely our, our ancestors could have known that having stuck blood in your head could be causing all sorts of problems but let's look at this article right here you guys trepanation was the bizarre cure all that exposed your brains trepanation the practice of drilling a hole in your head to let your brain breathe was used to treat ailments like headaches, epilepsy, or possession of evil spirits. I mean, look at this, you guys. Like, And I'm telling you, everybody's awake. Even to this day, people are, oh, listen, if you're going to do trepanation on me, I'm, you're going to have to put me under because, huh, like, huh, like, I just, I mean, look at the, huh, like, I just, it's so gross. Mm -hmm. Oh, actually, that's one thing as well, too. You see this monk with the, the monks that had, like, that weird little, ring around their head of hair and then they were bald you know those old pictures because this was like from the 1400s it's because the monks would get trepanation as well like even in old christian monasteries these monks would get trepanation and that's why they would have that ring to show that they had been trepanned it's so freaking weird i mean bizarre like what is this all right the bone of the skull would be pierced and scraped down to expose the brain matter 
of the subject to open air. Typically, was this was done without any numbing techniques. I'm telling you guys, like, what? What? Called trepanation, this wasn't some form of medical to medieval torture. It was actually a treatment for the cures of ailments like headaches, epilepsy, or possession by evil spirits. It was thought that by drilling or scraping away layers of skull and exposing the dura matter, the membrane surrounding the brain and spinal cord to air, it would benefit the victim and cure their ailments. Dr. Miguel A. Faria Jr., associate editor, editor-in-chief of Surgical Neurology International and retired neurosurgeon, explains trepanation or trephination of the human skull is the oldest documented surgical procedure performed by man. Trephin skulls have been found from old world of Europe and Asia to the new world, particularly Peru and South America, from the Neolithic age to the very dawn of history. We can speculate why this skull surgery was performed by shamans or witch doctors, but we cannot deny that a major reason may have been to alter human behavior. In speciality, with which in the mid 20th century uh, came to be called psychosurgery. So they do talk about how after trep that the people were, were more um, frequently doing trepanation in this documentary, they, they claimed in the night at the end of the 19th century. So coming into the 20th century, then we see like things like lobotomies, which this is not a lobotomy. Like they're not, this is not, a, this is literally just taking a piece of bone off the head. While most cases of trepanation seem to have treated illness or trauma, skulls from trepanation patients dating back to the Copper Age in Russia tell another story. I mean, look at that, you guys. So this is um, a trepan skull of a 15-year-old woman from around 3,500 B.C. Archaeologists in Russia, Rot Rot Rostov on Don, discovered unusual trepanation marks on a number of skulls from around 3,500 B.C. The marks were found on the oblin of the skull, roughly where a high ponytail would lie. This is a rare spot for trepidation as it is exceedingly dangerous to puncture the oblion. Ob ob I can't speak today. I'm still like, huh, about mm, mm. Maria. <laughs> Maria Menevokia of Russian Academy of Sciences in Moscow suggested that these kinds of trepanations had a ritual purpose to mystically transform those who undertake them and imbue them with the powers they couldn't achieve otherwise. The process, as crazy as it may make the modern audience, was practiced widely up through medieval times and even happens today. Amanda Fielding is the director of Beckley Foundation, a group that researches consciousness and a, pa a patient of trepanation. And by patient, we mean she operated on herself. I'm telling you guys, people are doing this to themselves. Oh, my God. Curious about the procedure from friends and unable to find a doctor willing to perform it on her, Fielding set up a drill, exposed her derma mater, wrapped up her head in a scarf, and then ate a steak and went to a party. She claims the procedure was like the tide coming in. There was a feeling of rising slowly and gently to levels that felt good, very subtle, and points to a smoothing of her dreams as a result of trepanation. Even as an advocate, Fielding cautions that more research needs to be done to understand the benefits and dangers of trepanation. So don't bu bust out the drill and grill up a steak quite yet. So you guys, like, I'm going to, again, put the documentary down in the description box below. This was great. They interviewed people who, again, had done this to themselves and other people in the medical field who are in favor of trepanation. And then they also interview people in the medical field who are not. And so they give both sides of the story. Now, in fairness, I felt like the people who were not in favor of it, a lot of what their reasoning was very, um, I felt like very much aligned with like maybe a controlled narrative. I, I don't know. You know, a lot of people brought up that in order to do this, we need to, to, to make this a part of mainstream medicine. Then we need to like, study a lot of people that might be dangerous but my thought is like haven't a lot of people already been studied like if this has been happening since the beginning of time then haven't we already studied it from a lot of people i don't know so um 
at this point, my boyfriend wants to go to Tijuana and get it done. I'm not so sure. I'm not so sold yet. I don't know if I could stomach it. Um, I definitely could not stomach watching somebody because I, I listen in this documentary as i said they show it and especially when they go to africa and they film the witch doctor holy crap they let literally show everything i had to like bury my head in my boyfriend's arm and he was like holy the whole time he was like holy shit like <laughs> it's just so much blood but um you know maybe over time if, if this becomes a more widely accepted practice I, again I, I absolutely understand why they believe that it's beneficial to your health and your spirituality. But I'm also very queasy. I mean, they have these tools and they show, they show this drill in the documentary. That's like a modern drill that seems to like know how to bust through the skull and it like stops. Like the minute it busts through the skull, it'll stop working. So it doesn't touch the brain. But I'm like, y'all trust that y'all trust that it's just going to not malfunction. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm just scarred for watching Hannibal as a kid and seeing the scene with the open brain. I don't know. Maybe I'm just scarred by that. But like, I, I'm fascinated, but I'm also grossed out. Like, what is this? And how come I never heard of this before? Like, how come I never heard of this before? So anyway, you guys, I'm going to leave all these links down in the description box below. Please watch this. Please let me know what your thoughts are. Again, I don't really have an opinion yet. I'm just looking at it. I'm just speculating. It's just really fascinating. And it's almost like a train wreck where you can't look away, but you want to look away. But it's just, it's just fascinating. And if you yourself, oh, that's another thing too they brought up. Like, you know how our bald spots, our bald spots, our soft spots grow back? Uh, like grow together after like the first couple of years of life there are and I, I knew this there is rare rare cases where somebody's skull won't grow back together and they'll kind of keep a soft spot their whole life and in one of the parts of the documentary they brought up that people the rare case where that's happened they seem to show like higher states of consciousness but again what's hard with that study i think is that if somebody was because we're all born with a soft spot right we're all born like that but if your soft skull never grew back together, you don't have a reference point. Like you don't know what it's like to have a closed skull. So I find it more fascinating with the people who accidentally got trepidation from like a accident or surgery because they actually have a reference point or the people who they interview who did it to themselves that had a reference point. But then again, I think if the person did it to themselves, do they have confirmation bias? Like did they, did they believe in this practice so much that they did it to themselves and all of a sudden these miraculous things started happening because they believed it would happen. I don't know. That's why I find the people who accidentally had it done and them noticing differences even more believable because they weren't looking for that, right? They weren't expecting that. So anyway, guys, um, yeah, check it out. Watch your wording down in the um, just comment section, um, especially with medical stuff. Just watch your wording. But um, yeah, I mean wow what do you guys think have you heard of this before uh, i'm gonna do more research for sure i was planning on doing even more research for this video but i wanted to make sure that you guys got this information got this video out so again for the last day of spooky 2 you could take advantage of that higher discount if you wanted to and maybe we can do a follow-up if you guys want um, maybe i can get other people my friends to look at this too and we can have a conversation about the pros and the cons and like what's going and, and is this something that's been like hidden from us you know so anyway guys let me know down in the comment section below